Learning is the beginning of wealth. Learning is the beginning of health. Learning is the beginning of spirituality. Searching and learning is where the miracle process all begins. Jim Rohn. Ambitious Vet, stay tuned as we dive into the trenches with Chris McVie, Chief Marketing Officer of Triple Nickel, Media Production Manager of Green Beret Media, and Retired Army Green Beret. We're going to dive into how you can stay plugged into the motherships in your life so you your well doesn't run dry with the resources, so you can consistently gain these insights, so you can constantly be creating those miracles on demand in your everyday life. Stay tuned. Figuring out what I want to do next and just trying stuff. And and mm-hmm. I would leave, and you know, we'll close the transition piece out with just saying is veterans, you could do whatever you want to do. You can. You just got to want to do it. You just got to want to do the work. Thanks to today's sponsor, Alpha Coffee. Rather, you're someone who just likes having premium subscription bags of coffee come to your doorstep every month or two weeks, or you're someone who's more driven off a cause. Alpha Coffee is fuel for your warrior lifestyle. And they're driven off their warrior ethos of awesome coffee, be a warrior, have fun, and give back. The one I personally love and gift to people in my life is the Smooth Operator Blend. This medium roast has hints of milk chocolate, a toasted hazelnut aroma, and their signature smooth taste. If you're spending already over $20 a month on coffee, Ambitious Vet, it might as well be with a veteran-owned company. And feel free to take advantage of your 10% military discount and an additional 10% off if you subscribe to your favorite blend. You can easily be getting premium coffee at your doorstep for as little as $16 a month. Explore all their blends, gear, and social impact initiatives now by visiting alpha.coffee forward slash ambitious vet. Again, that's alpha.coffee forward slash ambitious vet. Welcome to the Ambitious Vet Podcast. My name is Chris Hoffman. I'm a Marine Corps combat veteran turf social entrepreneur. Here I dive into the trenches with today's most ambitious, goal-oriented, and growth-minded military veterans on the planet. With one in, one end goal is to empower you with the golden grenades needed to break through new levels of satisfaction, fulfillment, and success after stability is no longer a challenge to overcome. So if you have an already ambitious vet, Buckle up. It's time to grow in advance in your life. It's time to get into the trenches, dig dig into your purpose, and and fire up your life fulfillment. The Ambitious Vet Podcast starts now. What's going on, Ambitious Vet? We're right back inside the trenches today with Chris McPhee. Chris is a retired U.S. Army veteran and Green Beret Turp, professional photographer, project manager, and chief marketing officer of Triple Nickel. Now, after 21 years of military service, Chris has now shifted his focus on teaming up with organizations to help them share their message and story via, via the media, media challenges, uh, channels, that is, of photography, video, and podcasting. Chris, man, are you there? Yes, brother. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Uh, really excited to be here. Today, you know, pre is this like is there a such thing as like uh Thanksgiving Eve? <laughs> man, it is, it is, man. It's something like that, right? I mean, yeah. like, we were, like we were just saying offline, just getting prepared for Thanksgiving sometimes is is the the challenging part. But when we're actually experiencing it, it's uh it's all gravy, literally, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, we get we get the unplug. Hopefully, everybody unplugs from their phones. For a good, you know, one day, but soon as dinner's over, it's like, I got to check my email. I got to check my LinkedIn. Get right you know? back in the trenches, <laughs> brother. Yeah. No, 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 no. So, brother, go ahead and fill the uh, the gaps inside of that intro and tell us a little about a little bit more about your background. Well, I, I like, like to say it. I'm going to jump into DeLorean. I'm going to go back in time. I'll tell you back to the future fans out there, but... Let's, let's jump into DeLorean. We'll go back in time. And, you know, I come to you today, by the way, of Miami, Florida. 
uh, and the Bahama Islands. You know, that's where it all started for me. And in 94, after my years of high school and growing up in the inner cities of Miami, Florida, um, I decided to join the military, join the army as a admin personnel specialist. And a lot of people say, wow, you, uh, you was an admin clerk? I was like, yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> you, you know, a mom with three boys, you know, college, college wasn't really a subject talk talked about in my house it was a good thing to do um but but you know financially in the t time and the time frame and the mindset um we, you know it, it was just not a conversation but i knew i had to do it um, but i know the money wasn't there so i was like hey the army's giving this gi bill thing you know that's like 30 g's and you know well let me let me figure out what i could do with that you know so i met a recruiter admin was the thing you know i was re actually looking because i was in electronics and computers so i was like hey can i be an engineer or can i be you know something in computer repair and it was like rocket launcher repairman and combat engineer and i was like look dude i'm from the city i'm a city boy i'm not trying to go to the field i'm not trying to jump on no airplanes i ain't doing none of that so you know little 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 did i know uh my path would change I joined the military four years later. I found myself at the Special Forces Assessment and Selection uh, course at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. 21 days of just getting it in and gut checking, running, rucking, running, you know, you know, swim tests, IQ tests, language, you know, aptitude tests, like a lot of mentally taxing all the way around. I think more than anything because I was an athlete in high school, you know, pretty much a prominent wrestler in my class. That's what attracted me to the Army was uh, the world-class athlete program. So I had a, I was DA selected to be a world-class athlete as a wrestler in 1996. Uh, but, you know, had a kid come into my life. So I had to choose Olympic year in 96 or be a dad. So I went with the dad route. Good choice, good choice. Um, was doing the dad route. So after selection, took about eight months because Fort Bragg, when you move from major command to major command, you only allow to move no less than uh, 12 months. So I had been there four months from Fort Riley, Kansas. And I went to a selection and I got selected. And it was like, yo, you can't leave yet. You got to chill out. So that was, that was, that was hard. So I was worrying about still staying in shape and not getting hurt. I was in the back of my mind and just maintaining my mental to, you know, be prepared to what I was going to endure next with the qualification course. So in 1999, I joined the qualification course, knocked that out. Unfortunately, as a, you know, I was an 18 Echo Special Forces communicator. So I was a challenge to learn Morse code. In 1999, we were still learning Morse code. so. I came a little short on one of my messages and I got recycled. So there was a setback for me and I really had to get it together. So I went a little bit harder um, the next time around and I made it and graduated in 2000 language school for French, made it to my operational detachment 18 and uh, you know, about September 2000, and, you know, it started there, you know, shortly after, you know, 9-11 hit. So, you know, a deployment cycle for about six years, deploying back and forth to Afghanistan. And then about 2006, I went to the JFK, John F. Kennedy Special Warfare and Center Training School to be an instructor where I was instructor for a small unit tactics uh, helping um, teach guys tactics in the field and getting Green Berets ready to move out. So there I was back, giving it back to the force, retraining, refining my skills, passing on the knowledge I learned on in combat and getting these guys ready because, you know, you know now we're in the combat cycle. So as soon as you graduate, you're going to deploy. You know, some guys were showing up to their teams in Afghanistan, in Iraq, you know, so... That was, that was a challenge. Uh, I know a couple of my buddies who 
A matter of fact, I was talking to a gentleman yesterday who that was his that was his experience, and so I could only imagine. Um, so I know it was for me to just make sure that those guys knew exactly what they were getting themselves into, and made sure. And honestly, if I felt like a guy didn't need to be there, he got he got sent home, you know, uh, yeah. because because the reality of uh, in the schoolhouse these same students can end up on your ODA and lo and behold, guess who gets two 18 x-rays on their ODA when my time is up? Me. Uh, so uh, they already knew my status and who I was. So they knew what time it was when I showed back up and, you know, uh, I hit some, I hit some bumps in the road, um, had a DUI one year, set me back about four years. So, I only retired as a master sergeant, but, you know, I think if I had to look back on it, you know, it, it was just something that happened and I had enough support around me and enough people, uh, mentors, you know, I had a good attitude. I had a good reputation. So they took care of me. They surrounded me and they made sure that, you know, something like that didn't happen again. And then in 2000, 12, uh, 2012, I decided to definitely give up alcohol. So I just let everybody know that's listening. You know, I'm Chris McPhee. I'm a recovering alcoholic. You know, I've been sober for, what is this, 11, 11 months, 25 days. Jeez, and, 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 uh, excuse me, uh, eight, eight seven years 11 months and 25 days that's and, you a little know, more challenging that's yeah that's, yeah yeah that's there we go there we go let, I, I realized i said let me re, let me reach back let me let me, let me, let me retract let me clarify let me clarify let me say that again eight seven years uh, 11 months 25 days uh moving in so this year will be the new year bring in eight eight years sober and clear, you know, um, I've, I've been clear for a good eight years going on eight years and having that clarity is what everybody is seeing. You know, Chris McPhee wasn't always the camera guy. Chris McPhee wasn't always PMP pocket mentor. I probably wouldn't be triple nickel today and be able to connect with the veterans I'm connect with at this level if I wasn't clear. So mm. um, understand you're, if you're dealing with me and if you're friends with me and you're listening to this podcast, just know the person you are talking to, I'm operating from a space of clarity. Um, um, Cause I've been in the dark for a long time, many nights, uh, you know, putting myself there and luckily I came out and good goodness gracious, uh, I go all in. I'm invested in mentorship. If it, people have followed me and they've heard me say before, I'm invested in mentorship. If you don't have a mentor, you feel like you don't need one, you could do it by yourself, then you're lost. And, uh, and, and, and if, if you want to operate with me, you're going to have to pack a lunch because I got like 10 of them. You know, I got a whole squad a whole platoon of mentors, it, it's going to be a rough battle for you. So, you know, pack a lunch. <laughs> pack a lunch. Brother, man, I, I, I love how you just have your milestones, your life just stacked up in your head that you can share that powerful story. And it's definitely very inspiring. Um, and I just, I love how you've chosen to not have setbacks stop you in your life um, and how you've, been recycled. I know how that feels. When I was in Marine Corps boot camp, I got um, pushed back for having pneumonia during swim qual week. Can't swim, even though how much you're committed to doing it, um, you know, they'll, they'll set you back. Um, so I know how that's like, but you know, it's cool. you know, you, you strapped up, um, you know, you did what you need to do to keep pushing forward. And that's what we're all about here at the Embassy Vet Nation. So, Brother man, um, thanks for that. Now walk us through your first couple of years transitioning transitioning out as an Army Green Beret. 
after 20 years? Like, what was that like? And what did you learn most about it? What did you learn? Dude, Chris, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to start off and say, you know, I'm coming to you. I'm not an expert. I'm, I'm coming to you as, as someone who's gone beyond uh, people who are going through transition now and or they're just getting ready to cross that bridge and that's what i like to look at is that when you transition you ets you retire you separate from the military you have to cross this bridge and for me i the bridge i'm i'm still crossing there's a there's a couple things that i'm been able to to learn along the way um but as i come back today and i'm and we're chatting about it and i go back in time and i think about it um, initially knowing I was, you know, even in my house, my wife was like, Hey, you going to get a job? I was like, yeah, I'm gonna get a job. What you think? <laughs> of course. That's what I do. But then after the conversation, I was like, are you going to get a job? You know, that little, the little voice of doubt jumps in your yeah. head. But you know, yeah. even though I stacked the deck, you know, I got all my IT certs in order, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I got the degree, uh, I, you know, I, I, I see what my options are. I could either be an intel analyst, a communicator, or I could do something in law enforcement, you know, or, you know, or I could just go deploy and be an operator as a civilian, you know, um, doing the same job, but not as a military guy, uh, but as a private security. So my first gig, Luckily, with some mentors I met along the way, I was able to get my first uh, solid hire at Secret Service there in Washington, D.C., but uh, at a time with the salary and where I was at, I felt like I started thinking about it, and I went to him, and I was like, look, man, I know you, you pulled some strings to get me in here, but I'm feeling like I really, this is not the gig for me. He was like, hey, man, I just, it's just an option. If you want it, you could take it. And so I declined. Um, I had another job I was focusing on, you know, that was like at a higher pay and a little less uh, in a bubble. I didn't want to be on a pager anymore. So I, I kind of wanted to just release and have some fun and, you know, be able not to be under a microscope. Because, like, when you Secret Service is working in an executive building there in D.C., like, you got to be on point, you know, every day. I can only imagine. Yeah. You know, you know, so, so I, I passed that job, took a job as an analyst, deployed to Kuwait. I worked there for a year, for a year, about a year and a half, you know, and that was the thing where I, I discovered that finally I could get my project management cert. I got that. I dove into that world, started meeting people, started networking, started teaching, was really inspired about, now I have a new cert, you know, I had an A plus security plus net plus, you know, I had all those geek certs and this was cool. This was the one to have based off of the research that I've done on it and, and what the industry is wanting for the future. This was the one to have. So I moved to a higher position in the organization as a senior analyst. And then I started thinking like, well, do I really want to be doing this? Cause I'm deploying mentally. I'm still in combat, but I'm not, I'm deploying reading reports and building target packages to, you know, take care of people in Iraq that's, you know, hurting our troops there. So I work for the, the joint IED uh, counter agency improvised explosives and devices, um, the agency there in Reston, Virginia. So mentally I'm still at war, but I'm not at war. So, I just got tired of doing it, you know, 12 hour days, 12 on, 12 off, you know, seven days a week. Uh, you know, it was a little, it was a little frustrating. Yeah, I was making good money, but I really wanted to just live a little bit. So, you know, getting money, looked at my finances, came up with a plan and I was like, I need to break. And so I met a guy named Rod Rodriguez. You probably know him. Uh, Mr. Rod Rodriguez, one of the guys I met and he was working on the same contract with me and I met him mm -hmm. and I saw him with this podcast. I'm like, he, I was like, yo dude, what's this? Uh, what are you doing, man? He's like, I got a podcast. I was like, Oh yeah. <laughs> what's that? He's like, well, you know, I, I interview veteran entrepreneurs 
about the successes and failures in life. I was like, oh, really? That sounds interesting. Let me, what else you do with this podcast thing? You making any money off of it? You know, <laughs> like, what's the deal? Like, can I make money doing it? He's like, well, you start out slow. And then, you know, it depends on where you go. You can make money. And I was like, all right. And he's like, hey, man, you ever heard of Gary V? I was like, nah, who's that? He's like, well, he's a good guy. You know, he speaks a lot about this and social media. I said, well, I'm listening to Jim Rohn and John Maxwell and Tony Robbins and Les Brown. Like, I, that's where I'm getting my motivation from right now. He's like, nah, check it out. You might like it. So I went back to my bunk that night and I listened to a couple of his videos. I actually watched like 10 of his videos. And uh, I came back the next day. I was like, who's this dude, man? I like it. I like yeah. what he's putting out. And he was like, yeah, man. I was like, so how do I podcast? And he was like, first, <laughs> you need to get a Blue Yeti. I was like, all right, that's easy. Amazon, here we go. <laughs> bling, bling, bling. Like, I was like, what mic should I get? He was like, well, you know, since you just start now, you want to make sure you want to do this. Nah, dude, I'm in. He was like, get the Blue Yeti. I was like, all right, cool. Yeah. And he knows best. So I got the Blue Yeti. And uh, I was like, okay, I got to talk into this thing. Like, I had to figure out, you know, find my, he was like, you just got to find your voice, Chris. So mm. every night I would yeah. set it up and I would just talk about random stuff and just talk about things. And, uh, you know, I would watch him do interviews while we were over there. We had a little spot in the chapel. We, you know, we was able to use that at night and they let us use it, you know, dirty contractors. Okay, you guys could use it. And and we were going at night, and I would watch him. And then when I got I left before him because I said, Rod, man, I see you on the other side, but I just want to let you know I'm not coming back. Hmm. I'm, I'm quitting when I get home. So fortunately, I asked for a raise before I left, and I was like, there was like two weeks. I would have your money, but it took like two months. And by this time, I had already been formulating in my mind, like, what's my next move going to be? And uh, I went home July 1st, I signed my resignation, and then July, August, I started Green Beret Media, and I just, I just picked up my camera, I shot with a rock band in Washington, D.C., the bass player was a fellow Green Beret from Third Group, and he was like, hey, we need a photographer. I was like, really? I was like, okay. I showed up, took some shots, and showed it to him, and he was like, hey, we like this. He was like, really? Like, yeah, man, we had like four photographers, man. This is the best stuff we like what you're doing. I was like, mm -hmm. okay. So that was a boost of energy. And I shot with them for about 18 months before they even paid me. Um, yeah. Uh, because they were just starting out too. And I was like, well, I'm not, I got resources. You know, I was doing my government contracting gig on the side, which I still do today. And I was like, I got other ways to get money, but, um, I could I could deal with that. So I slow rolled it for 18 months, Green Beret Media, trying to figure out social, trying to figure out, you know, Facebook, watching yeah, YouTube videos and all that stuff. So that's that's um that's been my transition far as the biggest thing that's helped me is my mentors and just figuring out what I wanna do next and just trying stuff. And and mm -hmm. I would leave, and you know, we'll close the transition piece out with just saying is veterans, you could do whatever you want to do. You can. You just gotta want to do it. You just gotta want to do the work. If there's something you want to do, look to your left and right. If somebody's doing it, walk over there and be like, hey man, what you doing? I'm podcasting. How do you do that? You know, yeah. I want to be a banker. How do you do that? You know, it's that easy, but it could be that hard for people. Yeah, no, true, true. So that's great. Jim Rome, you uh, you studied him. Do you still study him today? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. One of my favorite quotes. Don't ask. If, don't wish it would be easier. Wish you were better. Hmm. It's good. You know, it's good. He's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> one of my favorites, one of my favorites uh, from him, because I still listen to it, man. When yeah. I'm on my 
way to the gym in the morning is work nice. harder on yourself to do your job. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's uh, ambitious. Fed. If you're not listening to good old Jimmy Rome's um, videos, tapes on YouTube, he, you know, yes. he passed away in the 90s. However, yeah, yeah. he was a top, produ top producer of a network marketing company. Forget which one. Do you know? Uh, Herbalife. 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 Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's right. Made multi millions of dollars, Midwestern country boy, farmer family, and uh, just knew how to simplify business philosophies to a T. Definitely awesome. So, brother, I want to dive into value of mentorship, right? You've been saying this, you know, you just go and find people that you love and just ask them, hey, how do you do this, right? That's, that's kind of been your philosophy as you've been getting out. I think it's a very powerful perspective to go about your transition. Now, I have a two part question for you right? What are the benefits of having one no matter the season of your life? I'm talking about the dry seasons and even the seasons of life when things are rocking and rolling and you feel like, like mentorship, you know, you don't need no mentor during those seasons. What's the power and benefits of having a mentor? So the power and benefits of having a mentor from my perspective I say one of my biggest and first mentors and we can, everybody could believe, you know, this, whether you have good relationships or bad relationships are your parents. And for me, it was my mom. Um, and, and I still go to her. Yeah. She doesn't know everything I know, but if I need something on caring and loving and just being optimistic, and just looking at things from a holistic perspective, I go talk to my mom and I vent to her and, you know, I could be vulnerable with her. And, and I would add to that, you need a mentor for different parts of your life. It's not one mentor for one thing. No, that Chris McPhee and next to her, to her, one of my biggest mentors, one of the, one of my buddies and closest friends who's helped me get to the one of the where it helped me become who I am and helped me uh, get out the the darkness. Um, he has mentored me since 2001. You know, he's been my mentor and close friend, buddy. You know, we've done business deals. You know, he doesn't see me at my low. I don't see him jacked up, and we. You know, he inspired me really to, to put down the bottle. If I had to say one person I looked up to and was wondering how he did it and like, and watched him live his life alcohol free, um, it, was, it was, I call him the Oracle because he likes to be behind the scenes. And so if he's listening to this, he knows exactly who I'm talking to. So the Oracle to me, um, he's always watching. He's all, he watches what I do and he's like, look, hey, I'm going to call this guy. I'm going to get this for you. Like he's doing stuff right now as I'm speaking that I don't even know about. Hmm. And he's going to probably call me and he calls me and he's like, hey, I got this for you. You need to call this guy. Did you call this guy yet? So that is what I have experienced not only in my military life, but when I look back and I was like, well, you know, my wrestling coach, in high school was a was a big mentor for me because he actually pulled me out of my middle school and was like, hey, kid, I see you got potential. Come over here to the high school. You're coming. Don't make me come and look for you or I'm going to jack you up. So I blew him off the first year. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm like, who are you, dude? I don't know you, man. Yeah, and then right. the next year he came again. He was like, look. I'm not coming for you again. Next time I'm coming for you, I'm going to break you in half. And he's like, I got something for you. So I showed up to freestyle Greco-Roman practice. And that summer, I was on the Florida national wrestling team representing the state of Florida at my weight class as the top wrestler in the state at a, as a freshman in That's high great. school. You know, That's so great. I didn't know why he wanted me to come, but that's the power. They see stuff that you can't see. That's why you need them. You're in the fight, you're in the trenches, you know? It's like that predator that's in the air. It's like that commander sitting back at the fob that you hope he stopped watching you, 
<laughs> but <laughs> everybody know if you're a vet on this channel and all you, I'm gonna just say it. I'm not being disrespectful. I'm just being candid. But everybody's experienced the 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 commander in the rear. I call it. I call it. I call it coaching plays from the booth. I'm on the field. Give me some break, you know. But you need those dudes in the booth telling you what's coming ahead, and that's the power of having mentors because you don't know you don't know what you don't know and when you think you know something you realize you actually don't know you know because yeah. your mentor will give you another perspective and mm -hmm. you when you say oh i didn't think about it like that that's the one thing you didn't know and mm -hmm. that's why you need them yeah yeah that's great i mean that that's the same same thing I experienced in my life too. Is just like it seems like mentors can see like ten years down the road too, and you're just like, oh shit! I was just I was just looking at the next three months, man. Hold on, you know. So yeah. that's that's awesome. That's awesome, ambitious vet. And if you're listening to this, uh, make sure that you are finding ways to find mentors, just like Chris is saying here, wrestler back in middle school that helped guide him to become probably well more just probably a hell of a lot more disciplined in high school right um and then you know as he grew he found other people to learn from to accelerate his path we're talking about some some figures like jim rome gary vanderchuk you know people that have fruit in their life that you want to um you know get fruit from or learn from so you can create their lifestyle get the lifestyle that they have study those people lean in and implement just one thing one thing that you're even listening um on this podcast episode ambitious fast so chris man i want to kind of shift gears as well to a key topic that we we spoke about in the pre-interview man which is one of my biggest aha moments from our previous conversation and it's the topic of motherships <laughs> yeah yeah Brother. and you've done a great job just staying plugged into them um, yeah. Through building your experience, you've been gaining credentials. I mean, Ambitious, if you go and check out his LinkedIn page, tons of certifications, tons of education behind this man. This man is, has no lack of education at all, but he's constantly looking to level up that every day of his life as well. But also, every step of the way, he hasn't bitten the hand that has fed him, quote unquote, motherships. So, Chris, man, how can we, as ambitious vets, stay plugged into them um, for long-term gain and more opportunity in our life? Yeah, yeah. No, the motherships we speak of, you know, uh, connect with a mothership, get some leadership, mentorship, you know, help you out with uh, entrepreneurship, your relationship, you know, <laughs> all those ships, you know, so... Thanks to Reggie at Pathways uh, uh, Lending for that. We had a great conversation. And, but I think, and I'm going to be honest, you know, you have to take the time to look at organizations and platforms you want to plug into because um, for veterans and just for people in general, you know, and I think more so for veterans, there's abundance of help. If you need help to get help there's help for that and and i say that so for me it was by the way the first mothership i could say i plugged into was acp and i was having a conversation with another transition event another green beret and we were at the usaa like thunderbird like transition program and he was like hey man you ever heard of acp and i was like no nah, what's that it's like american corporate partners i was like well what do they do they will connect you with a mentor, a VP in industry you want to be in, you know, a high level performer, and they will mentor you for a year. And it costs nothing. I was like, seriously? I was like, give me them digits. I was like, do, 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 do. Went on a break. <laughs> I got online. I put my application in. Key. Execution is key. Don't wait. <laughs> when you get information, start movement. You know, it's like troop leading procedures. You know, receive the mission, make a make a tentative plan, start movement. You know, you don't need to plan out every step. Get yeah. moving. It's like when you're on the X, don't stay on the X. Because when you're on the X, you're going to, it's 
I'm not going to say that, but you're not going to move anywhere. You won't have any progress. So if you're not having progress, you're not going anywhere. If you're stagnant, we know what happens. You just get old and allergy and you die one day. So Bitter, uh, resentful. <laughs> exactly. You just implode. So um, ACP, <laughs> ACP, ACP was my first. And I had a VP of Occidental Oral Company in Houston. I actually got a chance to go meet him one day because I was working in Houston and that was really cool. But he mentored me for a full 12 months on, I think that was key to my transition is having him as a mentor and I stacked the deck. He helped me with my resume, interview skills. We talked about business. We talked about life. We just talked about stuff in general, you know, like, hey, well, how'd you do this? Pick his brain. Like, how'd you? he's on the 21st floor of his building in his corner office, the same stuff you see on TV. And I was like, I see where you're at. How'd you do this? You know, <laughs> well, you know, how'd you do this? And, uh, and, and luckily, I mean, he was in cybersecurity and that's where I thought I wanted to go. Um, but I ended up going Intel to be an analyst, but, um, that was the first mothership. And then I met Rod, you know, Rod introduced me to Bunker Labs. Bunker Labs was my next mothership. And, and, and really I was, before I really got connected with Bunker Labs, I was just hanging out with Rod going to, to events for about two years. Oh, really? And then I was just like looking and seeing what everybody was doing. I was like, you know what? Um, you know, I was doing my business as a photographer. So they were hiring me to help shoot photography for them. And then I actually shot a muster. And that was like my official hire for Bunker. And then I started looking at like, well, maybe I should join the VIR. So I, I joined the V. I, I got connected even more. And and applied for the, the veterans and resident program at, at Bunker Labs in Washington, D.C. And I did the last cohort uh, late 2019 to early 2020. And I had a great time. Um, it was exactly what I needed. So I have ACP. I'm a, I'm a mentor now for ACP. This is my third year of mentorship. Um, uh, mentoring a very ambitious veteran in Hawaii. Um, and, you know, that's a, that's a PhD candidate. And I was like, whoa, wait, wait a minute, dude. Uh, you sure you want me to be your mentor? And I had, <laughs> I had a conversation with him because he had like three or four master's degrees and a PhD, very smart guy. And I was like, dude, I got one question. What do you want from me? You saw my bio. You saw, I was like, what do you want? And I listened to him. He's like, look, you know, I'm just looking. I saw your experience. I checked you out. And I think, um, I could, I could learn something for you. And I was like, all right. So he's, he's building a whole digital coding learning platform in Hawaii where he's at, because I don't know if people know, like here in the States, there's abundance of resources, but in Hawaii it's actually lacking. So veterans transitioning out in Hawaii. And if they want to stay there, there's not a whole lot for them. And that's the gap he's trying to fill with the industry of cyber and innovation is build platforms for veterans that if they retire and they get out and they want to stay in Hawaii or they ETS and they want to stay there, they're, you know, they have something to get into, but you know, that was, and then just plug it into, and sometimes you got to create your own mothership. So I've done that. I got my own circle of, masterminds you know my mentorship circle is like my mothership and and they surround me and i'm insulated by them and and you know so once you realize that uh, where you are and where you're trying to go um, you're going to need those motherships to help you get there yeah no that's really good stuff and thanks for that so you said acp uh bunker labs have been the top motherships so far yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. let me and let me say one more, because I might get smacked by my big sister for that. <laughs> but uh, the Rosie Network, mm -hmm. and if you know the Rosie Network, is the military spouse um, platform mothership, the real mothership with a lot of mothers on that mothership. And I met Annette Wittenberger, and she was like, "Hey, I'm part of Rosie." I was like, "Yeah, what's that?" 
this is what we do. You know, you go through this entrepreneurship uh, service to CEO, and then you have a pitch deck as a capstone project. I was like, you know what? I do need a pitch deck. And I was in the VIR at, at Bunker Labs at the time. So I was like, okay, I'll sign up. It's right by my house. They meet every two weeks. And I'm the only dude in there with all the ladies, military spouses and veterans. And, you know, I was like, yo, land grab. I'm the only dude. Yes, let's go. So I'm in. <laughs> and uh, uh, so far, it's, it's led to, you know, shooting at NASCAR meeting Stephanie Brown at NASCAR and going through the cohort. And now, you know, I'm officially going to be leading one of the Rosie chapters at Fort Hood with Come along on. with uh, Jamie Chapman and, and another uh, J- Jennifer Ballou, who's, who is a, is a, is a good friend of our families. I hope I said her name right. But uh, she, between the three of us veterans, you know, Actually, we're all veterans and we're all military spouses. So as funny as it sounds, yes, I'm a veteran, but I'm also a military spouse. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, you know, so, and I have a different perspective as a military spouse because my wife is, you know, she's a senior leader in her unit and I'm there to support her, you know, like, like you know, the, the, the ideal military woman spouse is doing. And... You know, her military spouse is a former Green Beret. So, mm. I mean, yeah. that's a different dynamic when it comes to supporting the household. Like, it's actually harder because she's just like, yo, get that done, son. Oh, that rent, that, that garbage didn't get put I got to be at work. Get that kid out to school. You getting the dinner ready? Like, I don't, it's not a request, dude. <laughs> like, she, she. It's a command. It is. Get she don't it. Dude, she there's no discussion. Like, no, dude, I can't complain about oh it's, no, 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 bro. Like it's it's a different life as a military spouse, so yeah. It's a different perspective, you know. Well, I'm not a military spouse, but I definitely have a strong Texas woman that commands stuff and I have to get over my ego every single day when I'm around her, man. Once I walk yeah. out of the office, I gotta yeah. be like, I gotta be like, Yeah, honey bun, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> man. As the household work. That's how it works, man. So ambitious vet, motherships. Um, you know, I looked up the the definition, I think on Wikipedia. If you look it up too, I love getting to the origin of words. Um nice. large vehicle that leads, serves, or carries other smaller vehicles, right? And I think when we're first getting out, man, um, as ambitious vet, that huge vision, big goals, right? Sometimes we can, you know, think that we don't need a mothership. We are the mothership. Um, it's just, like you said, man, going in, finding people that have the lifestyle you want. You know, if it's occupation prestige, great. If it's money, great. If it's life satisfaction, awesome. Find out who has that kind of lifestyle and ask them questions. Learn. It will speed up. It will accelerate your path to your goals, ambitious that. So, Chris, man, do you have anything else to add around motherships before we break and thank our sponsor? I want to just add to everybody a little thing. I'm gonna drop just some just some new, you know, you know, I'm always coming up with new ideas. But uh, I was on another show and people were they they brought me on to say, hey, uh, how do we build our online presence? And that's one thing veterans have a a problem with or a challenge when they first getting out because especially guys who are in the special operations space, you know, or people are just a little insecure about, you know, opening themselves up and exposing themselves to the outlier yeah. world. So if you want to be, if you want to go down that road and you want to, you know, build your online presence, whether it be either online or offline on any platform, you know, I say, this is my gap analysis for you. And, and the G stands for, you have to learn the game, right? So if you want to be, you talked about my LinkedIn. I got a mentor for that. I've been working for him a year. Big shout out to Uncle Joe Frankie, the third uh, LinkedIn guru. That's why my LinkedIn page looks like it does. That's not me by myself. I'm not going to cr- take credit for why my LinkedIn page is on blast like that. That's guidance from him. And he he taught me the game. So you got to learn the game. Part two of that, the A. Mm. You got to be authentic. You know, don't fake it. Tell you, 
Like, I get it, fake it till you make it, but that's a mental thing. You don't really have to fake it, like, out here. You can have in your mind, like, I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best. Do that in your head, but don't do it out here because you'll get exposed and people will call you out and call you a poser. So people like people that are authentic. So be authentic. And the third one, which I do, which is definitely one of my pillars is, and I learned this from one of my mentors, Donnell Johns. And he said, and I watched him and I was like, I see what you're doing. Practice promoting other people. I'm going to say that again. Practice promoting other people. Learn the game. Be authentic. Practice promoting other people because you're going to make friends that way. You know, if you see somebody's doing good, boom. You know, little plug for Team Room Talk Podcast. Shout out Fridays. That's what I do. I give people shout outs. You know, because I just want to let the community know, like, I'm clear. You know, and I see you. And you know what? Sometimes somebody need to add a boy or a pat on your back. You never know that I pick up the phone and be like, hey, I want to give a shout out to Chris and Ambitious Vets. They're doing great things over there. I saw that what they did last week. Boom. Keep doing what you're doing, guys. I love you. Mm -hmm. You be like, dude, oh, Chris, yo. You know? Yeah. yeah. You go look look for people to, to promote and yeah. And, and lift up. Go lift up somebody. It's like social proof, too, for you, um, you know, as well. Like, whenever you're promoting someone else, it's like you showing social proof of them showing value to your life, which I have found is the best currency long term. Um, so that's that's good stuff, brother. That's good stuff. So, Ambitious Vet, we're going to take a real quick break, but we, we will be right back inside the trenches with Chris McPhee. Thanks to Brute Force Sandbags. These sandbags are without a doubt the top selling, top performing, and most used sandbag in the industry. This sandbag is found everywhere from garage gyms to CrossFit boxes to the U.S. Navy and will humble even the most athletic athletes right out of the gate. Brute Force's sandbags come in dozens of styles and sizes ranging in weight capacities as low as 5 pounds all the way up to the heavy hitters like the 300 pounders. Regardless of the color or weight, these 100% American-made training products are built for the toughest training on the planet. All Brute Force gear is built with heavyweight, military-grade textiles. That means that they can take just about anything you throw at them, ambitious vet. Push, pull, throw, slam, trek. Their gear is made to stand the test of time. Each piece of gear is proudly handmade in Denver, Colorado, and passes a three-stage quality control inspection prior to coming off the line. Also, there, every piece is backed with a brute force shield warranty. Also, if you don't like it, send it back. They also have a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're just saying, Chris, shut up so I can go check it out, simply click the link in the show notes below to check out all of what brute force provides to equip you ambitious vet to train accordingly now back to the show all right ambitious vet we are right back inside the trenches with chris mcphee chief marketing officer of triple nickel and also media production manager of green beret media he's also retired green beret right um, this guy throughout this entire interview has been showing on how do we consistently plug into the mother load, right? The resource bank that we can constantly take deposits and withdrawals from so we can consistently advance in our career, life, and business. I'm excited to see how he sums this entire show up with his three golden grenades. Chris McPhee, my brother, what are three golden grenades that you could supply to any veteran that's been out for at least three years and is struggling with that life satisfaction, that fulfillment, or just gaining a deeper sense of purpose out of the uniform, what would be three wisdom bombs you would give that veteran right now? So the first, the first golden grenade, the first one I'm going to start with, I'm going to start with mentorship. And mentorship has been key for me. Um, definitely when I realized what mentors were, as I go back and I think back in time, uh, my point of origin when I was in high school and I was a wrestler, my wrestling coach was was a big mentor to me. And then when I 
joined the army. I had mentors uh, that surrounded me and helped me along the way uh, to me getting to where I am. But when it comes to what I'm doing now in, in photography and podcasting and, and starting businesses, you know, the biggest thing for me I learned is that it doesn't have to be a person. It could be a book. It could be a YouTube video. You know, it could be a podcast you listen to. So if you're looking, if you're not ready to approach somebody and ask for help, because that's how you're going to get a mentor, they're not just going to come to you. You have to go seek them out and pick somebody that you can build a relationship with. So if you're not ready to do that yet, I would say, you know, we have the internet, we have Google, we have YouTube. Go on there. If you're into podcasting, go on there and look and see who the podcasters are. You know, for me, um, it was, uh, you know, it was Joe Rogan. It was, you know, it was Gary V. you know, folks like Tim Ferriss. Those are very good mentors because the way they produce their content, they're produ producing it like they're talking to you. So that's what's so cool about this YouTube nation that you could just go to YouTube, find somebody you like. And I think there's a hundreds of people talking about podcasting or video or how to grow your brand online, but do they sound authentic to you? Cause if they don't, you won't connect with them. So think about that. Once you connect with somebody, you can hear their tone and that tone sits well with you. Um, that's the person for you and just go narrow and deep. Just stay on that channel and keep listening and keep listening. And when you're tired of listening, go do something. If they tell you to go do something, go do it. Go read a book. You read the book, try to exercise what you read. You know, one of my one of my guys I follow, follow right now, Grant Cardone, you know, I've been following him since like 2017. He says, I was at GrowthCon in 2020. He said, don't read 10 books. Read one book 10 times, you know? Uh, that's when you're going to really understand what that person is trying to tell you, you know? Uh, you know, that's, that's what I've learned from, from listening to Grant Cardone over the years. You know, Jim Rohn and Tony Robbins and Les Brown and the Gary Vaynerchucks. If you listen to them long enough, that sound would get in your head and you, you would, hey, what do I need to do? And you'd be like, Every company is the media company. Oh, yeah, I remember he said that. I need to start acting like a media company. I need to promote myself. So get a, getting a mentor is key. Get a mentor that will help you um, move forward faster. If uh, You know, don't think it's going to be lightning speed, but you will move forward faster than you if you would if you was trying to do it by yourself. Uh, number two. Number two. The number two for me, I would say... Take the time to really understand who you are. Um, I'm going through a transformation right now. I'm working on a project, Project Chris McPhee. <laughs> and I just read Robert Greene's book, uh, Mastery. Uh, mm -hmm. I spent the last month reading that book. And if you know Robert Greene, 48 Laws of Power, The Artist's Seduction, I like his books. And, and one thing in there that I've learned is that when you start on a journey of mastery, one of the things, one of the techniques is you have to turn, return to your point of origins, right? So for me, going through that process and reading that book, my point of origin probably and this is a point in your life when you felt like you was the most powerful and you felt you could do anything at that time. And for me, it was when I was in high school and I was wrestling. And I trained. I spent 30 days at the University of Minnesota as a freshman, training three day times a day, morning, midday, and night, going through mental preparation, I got university doctors and trainers and, and other senior college athletes coaching me and teaching me what it would take for me to be a top level wrestler. You know, so I went from like a, 20, a 14 and seven to like a 26 and older next year. Wow. You know, yeah. so 
So you have to look inside yourself and figure out where your power is. You know, invest in yourself. You've heard this one. Go to school, get some education. You know, a lot we got a lot of conferences out there, but take some time, invest in yourself. You know, I don't know. Maybe it might be a gym membership and get a trainer and get in shape. I don't know. You know, get a you want to be a writer, you want to be better at writing because that's what your passion is. Hire a tutor to help you write, you know, not none of these other things out here, like really invest in yourself and, and use that investment and to move forward. And I would say the, th the third golden nugget that's been working for me, man. Um, like I said, Hey, I'm Chris McPhee. I'm a recovering alcoholic. Be real, man. Mm -hmm. Be vulnerable. That's probably like the worst thing I could tell people. I was like, yeah, I had to quit drinking because I was irresponsible. Yeah. Like, I'm not responsible enough to take one drink. I'm not responsible enough to take a drink or get wasted and not get behind the wheel. I'm not responsible enough to, you know, just know when to stop. So I had to just walk away from it. And mm. and that's when, you you know, you, you, you reach a moment of clarity. You know, be, just be as, I'm not telling you go dr drop all your dirty laundry. You know, I'm comfortable with saying with that because mm. I wasn't at first. I was embarrassed, you know, but yeah. now I'm, I'm mature. I'm, I've leveled up my, you know, I understand. Like if I want, I, I just, it helps me be authentic with the people I'm dealing with because if I don't like what they're saying, I'm like, hey, bro, I really don't like what you're saying. I'm not doing that because I'm calling the shots. I'm designing my own life here. Mm. You know, my mentor is the guy to me. I'm like, I want to do that. And they, you still there? I thought you I lost you for a second. No. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, I, I think about it now. I said, I applied for a job, Chris. And they looked at my LinkedIn. They looked at all my resume. And it was like, hey, Chris, uh, we like you, but uh, you don't have a master's degree. <laughs> I started my MBA about a year and a half ago and it was I went four classes in and I got bored because it was a really well out like I started my first business in 1994 so mm -hmm. like you know I've been you teaching like myself teach you seem like yeah. you like to self teach yourself yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean that's a trait that Green Berets they look for they look, you have to be a self motivator you have to learn how to teach yourself you know that's a trait they look for and I understand that's a high I said, anything I want to know, I know the process. All right, let me get in Google. All right, let me, I'm going yeah. to I'm, I'm gonna look at three or four channels and I'm going to be like, I like this guy's tone because that's what it is for me. There's 20,000 YouTubers out there probably talking about podcasting, <laughs> but there's like one or two dudes that I listen to when it comes to podcasting. One of them is Tim Ferriss. And one is, uh, is Shannon Hernandez. Uh, you know, he runs a podcast. And those are the two dudes I listen to. And Ron Rodriguez. You know, those are my three channels. If I want to know podcasting, I'm going straight to Rod. I'm like, what about this? And he'll tell me what I need to know. And I move on. But that's, that's what being authentic helps you do is, you know, you don't have to be a jerk about it or be arrogant, but be candid, you know? Don't let people guess what you want. Tony Robbins says, and I listened to his book called Pers his audio cassette in my old 2000 uh, Honda. I listened to it about a year, every day to work. The last job I quit. Every morning I would listen to it, and on the way home I would listen to it. And he says, the quickest way to get anything you want is to act. <laughs> yes that's good man so yeah and you have to have clarity to be able to ask because a lot of a lot of people man we don't know what to ask for because we don't know what we really really want that's good man you we you you took the words right out of my mouth because he says but wait 
You got to ask the right person. You got to ask intelligently. Don't ask the plumber to fix your car. <laughs> mm, <exactly>. You know? Yeah. <laughs> that's not, you know, you, you, you took the words right out of my mouth. And that's what he says. You can ask, but you got to know what you want. You got to you got to ask intelligently because you might ask them a question, but they might not give you what you want because you didn't ask properly. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like Google. We learned that, you know, I learned through a computer class I was in, a test pen, uh, uh, a pen testing class I was in. And the, one of the guys, the team was from South Africa, and he was like, hey, guys, let me tell you, he was a cryptologist. He was anything with breaking codes. He was the guy teaching us about passwords and, you know, theory behind it. And he said, Google will tell you anything you want. You just got to ask it the right question. So that was his lesson to us because we had to search for scripts. And it's like you find a script, you find out the components, and you remix it. You mm -hmm. just got to, you know, you don't have to, as long as you know how to remix a script and work with a script, you don't have to recreate a script every time you want to do something. You're like, well, I want a script that does this. Well, let me take some time and Google using a little Boolean logic. Let me, let me, let me, let me ask a couple of questions. Let me reword my question. And we would find scripts like this and we'll be coding and changing stuff and writing scripts to do what we need to do um, to, to do our network pen test. So um, I'm always a big, you know, as an analyst is like, you know, people are like, Hey man, I'm tired. And I'll be like, well, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. that's always my question when people I hear what people say if they generally say something he's like Chris get a mentor but what does that mean mm -hmm. well it means this okay figure out what you want to do okay look around and see who's doing what you want to do okay approach them and say hey Chris I really like what you're doing with ambitious vets um, how can I start and produce a podcast like yours? Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm, and tell them who you are. Be genuine. Hey, I want to start a podcast. I don't know what I'm doing. I see you're successful. You know, can I just emulate and have a quick conversation with you? Can you, can I ask you a couple questions? Yeah. Boom. You know, yeah. that's how you, that's it, man. That's what I've learned. That's what my clarity has brought me. Yeah. It sounds like, Awesome insights on a daily basis. Awesome yeah. insights. Um, and you're probably manifesting a shit ton of opportunities in your life. Like, <laughs> like triple nickel, brother. Congratulations <laughs> on that newest opportunity. That is amazing. Thanks, man. Do you, want, do you want to plug triple nickel real quick? For Let's do it, man. Uh, yeah. So triple nickel, you know, I'll give you a quick uh, backstory. You know, I've known Cortez from military influence. And this is why you got to plug into motherships and I tie it in. This is why you plug into Mothership. So military influencer, I went there. I met a lot of people. I met Vetpreneur Tribe. I met Stephen Kuhn. I met Lane Ballone. I met uh, Greg Buda at the time. That's how I got to shoot at NASCAR. Um, there's, there's like five or six people. I met Cortez. You know, he was like, yo, I saw you. For, I know you from online. And we started a relationship. Another photographer who was working there for him was like, hey, won't you come and help me? I came in and helped her shoot headshots. Mine while, I don't know if anybody remember, but while everybody's getting their book signed by Pat Flynn, which I didn't get my book signed because I was too busy taking photos of selfies of everybody who was going through and getting their book signed by Pat Flynn because Cortez was like, hey, go over there and help them out and take photos. And he just recently told me the other day because now we're working together. He's like, I didn't. That's not really what I wanted to do, you to do, but I was I was just pleased that you was helping other people get the experience. And then you was also being a bodyguard for Pat Flynn and making sure everybody was staying in order. Right. I was like, yo, I was just being myself, man. Like I was just, you know, uh, but fast forward to now, I had another gentleman, another Green Beret was like, you know, with the climate we have, and he's like, hey, I want to do this thing. And I was like, cool. And then, Cortez came to me with something that he wanted to do. And I was like, cool, wait a minute. I know two of you guys, you're in the same neighborhood. I need to bring you together. So we got together and we shook hands. Uh, and then we was like, let's do this. And now we have Triple Nickel 
based off of, you know, the, the 555th parachute unit uh, back in the day was all, you know, uh, black uh, uh, parachute unit in the 82nd uh, back in the early 40s. Uh, but, you know, our, our goal with this, you know, I like to say what I've learned from other uh, companies out there that's like that, you know, one of my biggest fans is Apple, you know, it's, it's metrics, people and culture. And, and for us, we're not just selling merch, you know, we're trying to sell an ideology to America, to planet Earth, that we can all work together, you know, we, we could be brothers and sisters and, and through our branding, because I did have one of my mentors, who's part of our advisory board, she brought us in for branding and she was like, Hey, you know, Chris, what is it for you? What is it vision for you? And my analogy was, remember when we was all at basic training, we were all from all these places in, in America and we're all at basic training at the map station. We're at the map station and everybody's scared, eyes big, wide open. We know we're going to the army, the Navy, the Marines, the Air Force, and we don't know what we're going to get into, but we know we want to do it. We're doing it for America. We're doing it for the flag. It's a great thing. We're running, we're getting away for whatever it is that's happening at home. And we raise our right hand and we take the oath. We go to basic training. We learn how to work to, as a team. Even though I had a guy tell me one time, he was like from Oregon. He was like, man, I never seen a black person before. And I was like, cool. And I was like, all right, I'm from Miami, Florida. It's a big melting pot. So that's not an issue. So it didn't really take me by surprise, but we were bunk buddies and we were battle buddies in basic training and we did stuff together. So that's what me as one of the co-founders, Triple Nickel, and, you know, we just had a discussion about that and let everybody know from Chris McPhee's perspective and, my, and the other three gentlemen, we call ourselves the Four Horsemen, we have the same ideology. And, 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 and for me... I want to see everybody coming back to the point of origin when we were at MEPS and everybody was willing to work together. Because something happened when we went through the service and then we exit. I don't know what it is. I'm not, that's a whole nother podcast. But mm -hmm. if you get what I'm, if you're picking up what I'm putting down, that's, that's what we're trying to sell you. If you see me wearing triple nickel, if you see me talking about triple nickel, like I am now, that's what that's the idea I want to sell you on. Come back to the point of origin with me in this company and work together, you know, because really, I got enough Green Beret friends and special ops dudes. We could take over our neighborhoods. <laughs> I'm not saying that in a cynical way, you know? I'm not being evil about it, but that's what U.S. Army has trained us to do is to go into places and bring chaos and liberate. So I'm gonna let a little bit of our little mindset out the bag. You got three Green Berets and a senior retired Army First Sergeant as co-founders of a company. So if you know what Green Berets do and what their mindset is and the values that their whole mission is, you could probably figure out how we're infiltrating the market. Yeah. This well, ain't great. business. It's not business one-on-one. -on -one. It's, it's an operation to us, you know? It's an operation for us. And what I love about it as well, from what I can tell, is one, the shirts look sick, man. I saw the photos. They're badass, man. They're just awesome. But, but the they're photos? Gritty. Yeah. The photos? They're gritty. Dude, they're gritty. You wanna, hey, I can hook you up with our photographer. Please. Please. Um, also, I love it that you're bringing diversity into everything everything you guys do, right? Yeah. Like that's that's kind of like the, the message behind it. We serve too, yeah. right? Um, yeah. yeah. And all that good stuff. So thank you for sharing the backstory because I didn't yeah. know about it. And I bet Amish no, no. vets would no. love to hear about it. But yeah, no, I mean, no. the brand is gritty as shit. It's, uh, 
It's uh, it's badass ambitious fit. You, you gotta, like it, you yeah. like it, dude, dude, dude. You just, you don't know how, how I'm like a kid in the candy store right now hearing you say that. Uh, no, man, I, yeah. I'm, I'm glad you're receiving it well. That's that's a good thing to hear that. You know, I'm glad. I appreciate that. That's genuine. I like it. I like it. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's nice, man. It's it's perfect time for promoting diversity through. Are you guys offering apparel right now? Um, and then you guys are kind of building a lifestyle brand outside of that, or what? What's your what's your kind of strategy around that? So the strategy, you know, me as as the marketing arm. Um, we're looking forward to the apparel is the entry, you know? Yeah. The yeah. apparel is the entry. So it's, it's back to the ideology, right? So how do we, how do we, how do we try to short circuit uh, the, the mind, right? So um, we're going, we're going, we're going deep. We're going deep. And as we get enough momentum, definitely connecting with other veterans, organizations, uh, moving into doing things in the communities. Um, probably popping up a nonprofit arm or or partnering with nonprofits to help share a message. You know, we got our, we call them the OG. So we're definitely connected to the Triple Nickel Association. So we got a, a abundance of mentors. Uh, and people say, why'd you guys spell it like that? Because the OGs told us to, because they said it, we won't cause any confusion. So when we see that, we know that's y'all. And people know this is us, but you got our support. We went to them, Ruben went to them and had a conversation with some of the founding members and they gave us their, you know, they gave us the green light. So um, we, we, we are able to move uh, with that name uh, with no issue. So anybody could, uh, it's not an issue, but no, for the long term, the, from my point of view, um, I see us, you know, connecting with our communities. Um, I, I mean, we, we got a lot of ideas, a lot, and and but right now it's just our main goal is to, you know, bring awareness, you know, start a lot of conversations, um, just get people get get people thinking, you know, doing more of this, you know, mm -hmm. share. I think I'm officially, besides the news shows that we've we've been on, I would say this is the first time that uh, um, I didn't realize you was gonna go there, but um and i think when we talked this hadn't even ha happened yet it was actually in the works yeah. it yeah. was actually in the works so uh good timing but but no man that's we're not just like we said we're not here to sell you merch we're here to sell you ideology so that means mentorship that means business opportunity that means you know schools that means going into where people need that help you know from you know the Green Beret mindset is that we go into countries to help liberate them, to help them get away from the chaos and help them teach them, you know? Uh, we're all instructors. I love to teach. I could teach this. I could teach anything. Just give me a book in 24 hours. I have enough to teach you the next morning. And then I go read some more and I teach you part two on day two. And I read that night and I teach you part three. And as I'm learning, I'm giving, you know, because I'm giving, yeah. you know, so that's, that's important. That's my strategy. So, you know, like Maya Angelou says, when you when you learn, you teach when you get you give. So I've been given the opportunity to have some clarity. I've been given a second chance. And so that's my goal is to empty the tank before I leave planet Earth, man. Brother, you. You're doing that, man. And thanks for just preaching to the ambitious event community, man. Um, so where can an ambitious vet go learn more about elevating their brand, right? Video, photography, podcasting, or getting to know more about, you know, um, triple nickel, like where people learn more about you, get more connected and learn more about what your, your key next mission is. So for, let's go with photography first and I end with triple nickel. Um, Cause that's what's, that's, that's, that's hot right now. So photography, if you want to be a photographer, if you want to get in the field of photography, go to YouTube and just type in some stuff on photography, what you're looking for. But I would recommend 
the guy I learned photography from was Peter Peter McKinnon. Uh, he's a good photographer. That was the guy I liked his style. You know, some people might not like him, uh, but Peter McKinnon is my photography teacher. And then the guy I learned how to shoot headshots, because you know I got those dope headshots. You know, I'm the headshot guru, is Peter <laughs> Hurley. Uh, I learned everything I know about headshots from Peter Hurley. I watched a good 20, 30 of his videos on how to take the best headshot. Um, and, and Adorama TV has a good tutorial series. So, you know, Peter Hurley, yeah, you're going to have to, they're going to want you to get into their club and buy their DVD. But if you want something that's just like straight up, uh, Adorama TV, they have workshops. I forget the gentleman's name, but he does a real good um, head uh, uh, tutorials and they do workshops. Um, they used to do them out of New York at their main building, but since the COVID, uh, I don't know if they're what they're doing now, but that's where I learned a lot of my photography. So I would just have it on and playing. So video work, um, definitely a gentleman named um, YC Imogen. Um, he was a guy, he was in Virginia at the time, but he that's how I learned how to shoot music videos because I was with the band and I needed to learn how to use, uh, shoot music videos. So Peter, uh, YC Imogen with video, storytelling, my favorite of all time, Casey Neistat. When it comes to crafting a story, and being dynamic about storytelling and just being like, just just putting it together and crushing a video edit. Casey Neistat is the best. And I like, I'm gonna steal his quote and says, the gear doesn't matter. You know, you, you've heard Gary V say, you wanna shoot, you wanna record a podcast, pull out your phone and talk in it. You, you wanna shoot a video, you got an iPhone 11, pull it up and, just start with that. You got to learn the craft, then buy the big camera, you know? So, you know, the gear doesn't matter. And then uh, podcasting, one of my favorite podcasts. I watched three podcasts when I started my show. I listened to Rob Rodriguez, so go listen to it, the AAR podcast. I don't know if he's putting out any more lately, but uh, Joe Rogan. Uh, I remember Joe Rogan way before UFC because he used to be the host of Do uh, uh, Fear Factor. And I remember watching him as a kid and I saw him in stand up way before he was UFC, way before he was podcasting. So I'm not just pulling his jock because he's like the number one podcast. I actually grew up watching Joe Rogan yeah. as a kid. So uh, Joe Rogan's podcast. And then um, the third one would be just Gary V, man, just like how he just goes in. Um, and, you know, but you find a couple of three podcasts that you like. And if whatever you like about them, emulate them. You know, that's what Tony Robbins said. Just emulate. And and summing it up with Triple Nickel, um, that's the project I'm working on right now is, you know, one thing that I learned about branding is I built I'm Your Camera Guy is my personal brand. You know, Chris McPhee is, is my personal brand. So... You got to understand personal brand and company brand. And I learned that from my dude, Gary V. And actually, they actually, I had an interview with them to be a creative editor a couple months ago. So I'm not like on the bench. Uh, whenever they start moving again, um, they're going to call me back. But I had an opportunity to, to, to interview with Fainter Media. And what I learned and listened to him say is, you know, you got to build... Personal brand, I could take anywhere. I could go to Ambitious Vets, and I'm going to be a rock star. I could go to Brand X, and I could be a rock star there because people are following me, and they understand that I'm authentic and I'm promoting. Then if I say Ambitious Vets is the place to be, they're going to be like, Chris said it. It's got to be legit. Chris is there. Cause that's just how he rolls. He don't roll mm -hmm. with fake people. I've worked with him. I know the dude's legit. So it's the same thing with triple nickel. That's what we want to do is, you know, we got, you know, everybody knows Cortez with the military influencer. Everybody knows me, the other two gentlemen, um, um, Ruben Ayala has a very successful 
a healthy vending company in San Antonio. So he's well known there. And he, you know, he has his, his uh, reputation within, you know, the organization of the Green Berets. And then there's Rod Graham, who also, he's a pro golfer. So he teaches pro golf and, 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 and down in North Carolina. So us all together, we have different dynamics and we're, we're pulling all that energy to the table to just make Triple Nickel like the best experience. I'm not gonna even call it a lifestyle brand um, because I like, I'm like Apple and Nike. Um, Apple, when you get an Apple device, it's an experience. Before they roll out a new product, you get a keynote and you get to experience, you know, visually experience, you know, like our designs, they're visually appealing. The photos are visually captivating. They definitely you know? are. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, thanks to the Army um, camera guy for knocking out those photos for us. We love that dude, man. He, that <laughs> dude's spot on, bro. I, hey, anybody need photos? Just get with uh, just get with Chris McPhee. I'm your camera guy. The dude's legit, man. You, you won't be disappointed. <laughs> but uh, no, man. Uh, that's that's what we want. We want to give people a, you know, and it's and it's we're we're inspired by hip hop by music, right? So. A gentleman asked me today, he was like, are you guys a radio station? Like, no, we want to use music. And since all of us co-founders, we like hip hop. So we're starting with that. We're going to get into rock. We're going we're gonna to get into country. We're going to get into pop, you know? So we have a Spotify playing list that's with each each brand. So we have the, 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 uh, the anthem was the one we just released on, on Veterans Day. And now we're coming out with this next line of, 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 of t-shirts of diversity. So there's, a, there's gonna be a playlist curated for that on Spotify. And we're teamed up with the Marine rapper, um, you know, Raymond Lott. And he, he's a part of the gang too. So he's, he's working a music arm for us. And nice. you will get a, a, a song downloaded that's by his crew of, of veteran musicians that have come together and built a crew that he has. So, you know, on yeah. my playlist, I put, I, for the, 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 the anthem, we had to give three tracks from all four of us, make 12 and then the 13 is Raymond's track. So I put Phil Collins, Bad Boys, Inner Circle, and Kendrick Lamar, uh, All Right. So if you heard that song, by Kendrick Lamar, you know, and I'm gonna use the PG version. If you're messed up and I'm messed up um, and God got us, we're gonna be all right. Mm. That's, that's good stuff. I love it, I love it. So where can an ambitious vet go and find all this information right now? Is it released yet? Or are we still kind of, are we getting first word on it and it's ending to be released? Like where do we find this information or can we buy apparel yet? Where can we go to find out more? You can go right now. It's available. You can go to our website at triplenickel.com. T-R-I-P-L-E-N-I-K-E-L.com. Triplenickel.com. Hopefully my, my spelling was correct on that. But, yeah, Nike, Nike with an L. All right? So you can go to the mm. website. You can see all the designs and what's available. Go and connect with us on Instagram. You'll see postings there. Go and connect with us on Facebook. We're real active on Facebook, and you'll be able to see and interact. I'm, I'm like, we, we run it like CQ or quarters masters for the day, so we run our social. So I'm, I'm running CQ, uh, CQ on Facebook uh, these next couple of days. So. Anytime you're interacting with the platform, you could be talking to me or Ruben or Cortez or Rod. So it just depends. Primarily, it's going to be me or Ruben. But, you know, if you got questions, you know, throw, throw it in the message or just hit me up directly. You know, hey, Chris, I saw this. Um, so we're getting better at making sure we put the links in. Um, and I want to plug something right here. <clears throat> we got a campaign. I call it uh, the basic training uh, back to a point of origin is if you have an old basic training photo, 
and just send it to us in three to five, you know, little sentences about why you joined the military and we're promoted on our site. Remember. Nice. Promote other people. <clears throat> um, so that's what we're doing. So if you want to be a part of the triple nickel, you like our message, you, 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 you get to understand what we're about. <coughs> Excuse me. Go ahead to our Facebook page and we're just getting the Twitter. Um, on point, I think the Twitter account is is active. So if you're on Twitter, um, you can find us there too. So triplenickel.com, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn for all our B2B. So Cortez is our B2B guy. He's our futures business development. So on the business side, if you if you want to do something you're interested in, like partnering, nonprofit, you you like our message. You know, if you have a a company or organization and you want to <clears throat> you want to promote diversity in your organization you know reach out to us i i got a lot of ideas about that um i can help you with that you know if you need you need help trying to figure out how to do it because i'm actually advising some other people on how to roll that out mm. and if anybody wants to do that in an organization don't do it by yourself <clears throat> don't do it by yourself um do get it, build a team all right have a message think it out and make sure if you're pumping dis- diversity you 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 get some people in the room to help you scope that out because the people that you're trying to connect to they can tell whether you're authentic, authentic or not and i could tell who do i could tell you who's doing it right or wrong right now <laughs> Yeah, that's real. That's real. Well, Chris, man, um, I know that we said we were going to be doing this 30 to 35 minutes. We're going on an hour, brother. Dude, and, uh, you your voice, go shut me up. <laughs> your voice, your voice is running out, man. You've been spitting so many golden grenades. Yo, so, yo, I, I'm going to plug one thing. Yeah. If you guys want to connect with me, connect with me on LinkedIn. Like you said, the page is fire. If you got questions on how to get your my page quick story how much i'm a quick story i'm gonna be quick i'm gonna be quick so my uncle joe frankie taught me treat your linkedin page like a trout line your linkedin page is your billboard to the world so on your linkedin page you got to have different pieces of bait you know i got triple nickel on there i got some green beret media on there i got some cyber security on there i got some photography on there you know i got some wrestling on there you know, I got some project managing on there. So when people come to my LinkedIn page, they want they either want podcasts, they want management, they like triple nickel. So you got to put different pieces of bait on your LinkedIn page. So, man, I don't connect with people, bro. I, I have a virtual assistant who, who manages my LinkedIn page. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so if you want to do business with people, you want to do B2B, get your LinkedIn page looking like a billboard and, and, and load up your trout line. Uh, if you got questions about that, you can hit me direct and I can give you some resources free of charge. That's one thing I, I learned from my boy, my, my mentor, Gary V. I'm going to give it away to you free. I'm not going to charge you. The information, hey, the information is free, you know? The goal you're trying to achieve, that's what's going to cost you. So save your money for that. There you go. There you go. Great wisdom, brother. Um, I can see why you're you're losing your voice a little bit because of those golden grenades coming. Coming out. Like, coming out. That's it. No, no more. No more. <laughs> I'm done. I got to, I, hey, I got to say another for another, another podcast, man. I'm yeah. done. <laughs> yeah, Chris, well, we appreciate you, brother. Um, thanks for just reminding us to go back to the origin, man. Um, and really to stop and plug into motherships that may have resources that we may need if we're stuck in whatever season of life, man. And just thank you for, you know, continuing to look at what the next thing to learn is, right? Because I think um, a lot of ambitious vets can learn from that right there. Just what is the next person? What is the next thing to learn to consistently improve in life, man? Yeah. So is there any other parting words that you would give to ambitious vets before we sign off? No, I just want to thank everybody for your attention. Um, if you've listened to it this far, I want to 
I thank you. You have my appreciation 100%. Uh, my admiration goes out to you for taking the time to listen to this episode. And I hope you have, you have heard something that will inspire you and help you stay ambitious. You know, just keep focused on your goal. Be stubborn about what you're trying to achieve, but be open for guidance. The Ambitious Vet is available on all popular podcast platforms. Go to VetTrainingCoaching.com to subscribe, rate, and share with fellow vets. Again, thanks to Alpha Coffee. If you're looking for premium coffee to fuel your warrior lifestyle, Ambitious Vet, look no further than Alpha Coffee. A veteran and mill spouse owned online wholesale and brick and mortar business started in a basement and has now grown to over 1 million in sales because of their warrior ethos. Check out all their blends, gear, and community impact projects by visiting alpha.coffee forward slash ambitious vet or click the link in the show notes below.